Oh my gosh, look at that SR20. <laughs> So yes, we are going to get back into this SR20 teardown. Let's see what we got here. Previous owner of this SR20 DET said that it had rod knock. Obviously by the looks of the intro, we were able to verify that. But I want to see if there's anything salvageable from the engine. So let's get it torn down. Let's see exactly what we got. See if we can save the crank and possibly anything else. So. From here on out, we are going to get the head studs out. Um, obviously, when you loosen them, you have to take them out in sequence. And we're going to grab a magnet here and get all the shims out. There should be one side with guided shim and then one side with a flat shim. And then we're going to pull the cylinder head off. All right, so we pretty much got the head ready to come off of the SR. Um, just a quick little note here, when you're taking the camshafts off, go from outer to inner. Um, do both outers, loosen them, go quarter turn at a time at first. Um, that way it doesn't bend or damage or crack the cams at all. Same thing with the head bolts. You wanna start on the outers, a quarter turn, crack them, and then work your way in. Um, go little by little on that as well so that it doesn't warp anything or crack anything. So yeah, but we got the head just about ready to come off here. Rockers all numbered so that they can go back in their same spot. Sometimes when you're taking the head off of these, you can just zip tie this chain up out of the way. Um, I just kind of let it sit there and its weight kind of stayed out of its way for me while I was pulling up. But yeah, boom. There it is, got the head off. Now let's check the piston cylinders out, see what we got. So I did a quick inspection here, um, made sure everything rotated good and checked out all the cylinder walls and everything looked pretty solid. So moving on here, we're gonna get the oil pans off. We're gonna start checking the bottom end out. All right, so back to it. I found out later on the FSM that there's two screw holes in this upper oil pan where you can just put, like, I believe it's an M8, I could be wrong, bolt into the two holes that pops the pan off to where you don't have to like stick an oil pan cutter in it. So there we are. We got the upper oil pan off. Um, obviously the original owner, whoever, had this pan off last used way too much rtv right here it's just goobered all over everything but yeah let's see what we got
You'll see right here in this clip that the oil pans are back on. Now, on the chronological order of actually how to remove these components, the video is correct. When I was actually doing it, would have been incorrect because the oil pans have to get taken off first before you can take the front timing cover off. So we just got the timing cover off and I noticed something that was noteworthy. So this thing spun a rod bearing on cylinder four. And one of the things when I was putting the KAs together that I remember reading that was big on oil pressure was this gasket or the, um, that goes into the oil pump for the oil pickup. They say to always replace this gasket anytime that you have the, the cover off because it can bleed through and then cause low oil pressure and all that. So take the timing cover off of this one and there's no gasket in it. All they did was fill the hole up full of silicone and it actually put so much silicone on it to where it restricted the oil passage. Definitely wanna make sure you replace this gasket whenever you're doing a timing cover on these motors, but this definitely could have been the reason why cylinder four spun a rod bearings. And watch out for that. All right, so we're down to the last part of the teardown here. I was gonna say that it definitely lost oil pressure in some way. Now, how did it lose oil pressure? I would say it definitely could be because of that front timing cover O-ring that goes right into the oil galley. Cause you could tell it, it gradually lost oil pressure. Like right here is cylinder three, it started delaminating a little bit. And then I'll show cylinder four here in just a second, but yeah, when you're not getting the, the oil pumps on the front cover and when you're not getting pressure all the way through, it starts to lose pressure as it has to travel farther. By the time it was getting to cylinder three, it just barely was lubricating the bearings and then cylinder four just wasn't lubricating it at all. And um, this engine was ran like to where they, it was knocking and, and it completely ate the bearing all the way out of it. I'll oh, see even cylinder one's got a little bit of delamination on it too. Actually, I would say that that's more than just a little bit, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, here's cylinder four right here about to come out and you could tell that there's, there's just nothing left of it. And all that metal was in the bottom of the pan. I, I think that they had taken just the lower oil pan off and, and scraped most of it out so there, it wasn't too, too bad. But yeah, I mean, there, there's literally no bearing in there and it chewed the crank up as well. So I'm gonna show when I'm putting this thing back together, um, pretty cool. I got a brand new crank from the dealer for this thing and I was really stoked because they said it was like the second to the last one or something what could be true or false. But anyways, I, I just thought it was cool that you could get a crank for these still because it's the same crankshaft as the front wheel drive SR20s, but yeah, so here we are. We got this thing pretty much all torn down. Just taking off the crank caps really quick. Those ones, you just kind of wiggle them back and forth. They come right out. They might be a little bit stubborn at the beginning. Um, and all the main bearings looked 
fine too, which was kind of weird that there was that much metal going through the engine and it didn't roast the whole entire thing. But there we are, bam, all good to go. And thank you for getting this far in the video. Um, just hit 500 subscribers, so definitely wasn't even expecting that. I just enjoy putting these videos together and kind of showing the process. That way we can look back on it or, you know, just see how far we've come and stuff like that. So appreciate you and uh, we'll see you for the next one.